Welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We're your co-hosts on this journey of creativity and productivity. I Create Daily is for artists in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. I Create Daily is a movement for creators serious about your art. If you're into creating anything, this podcast is definitely for you. Thank you so much for joining us on this journey. Hello and welcome to another Coffee Break episode on the I Create Daily podcast. I'm Devani. And I'm Leora. And on the Coffee Breaks, we discuss ideas, people, products, companies, and ideas that inspire us. And we share them with you or how-to tips or things that you've messaged to us asking for advice about that we just want to help everybody with. So today's show is going to be about websites for authors and artists, how to get visible, and a solution that we've been working on. Yes. And so on I Create Daily, well, let me back up just a little bit. One of our goals and desires from the beginning of creating I Create Daily is to help artists, authors, creators to get their work out into the world. Um, we've had that problem in the businesses and things that we've created, uh, and we know practically every artist, creator, author, whatever, inventor, writer that we talk to has the same issue. And there are a lot of options for artists, authors, creators. We're just going to use the term creators because we have all, any kind of creator in our community. And in fact, since creators tend to be ideators and, uh, you know, like rarely do you stop at just one thing. So we have writers and poets who also are also creators. We have painters who are also um, like poets, gar- garden, gardeners. poets and gardeners and um, we have entrepreneurs who like diving into art, yeah. even if they don't necessarily consider their business art. Yeah. It's still something they enjoy doing. Right. And so, you know, there's so many different kinds of creativity. And what we do know is that when you get into the creative flow, you don't stop with just one thing. Um, so that's why I create daily is basically for all creators. Um, so whenever we use the term creator, writer, artist, we're talking about art of any kind, whether it's the art of the written word, visual art, photography, just creating of any kind. Um, and so we just want to be a part of the solution for our creators um, and share what the things that we have found that works for us, as well as the things that we are looking for and researching um, and yet to discover. So as we discover them, we want to share it with you guys. Um, and we want to be one of the solutions and resources for creators. Um, I think in part because uh, like for us, it's like everything we do, we love to share. Mm-hmm. And so that was the other part. It's like, you know, rather if we're spending all this time anyway, learning and researching it for ourselves then we might as well share that and multiply the benefit of that by sharing it with you as well, yeah. which is what we're all about. And so toward that, one of the things that we have, are creating on iCreateDaily.com is a, what we're calling a creator's corridor. Um, and that is the concept of, and, and there are other sites out there that have these options too, which we'll, we will we'll link, link you know, in this podcast. We'll link some of the ones that we know about um, that are recommended. Uh, where it is that you as a creator, okay, let's back up again a little bit. Let's say, so, so part of the issue, and a lot of the times the question comes up when people are just getting started is, do I need a website? We have an, an article on that. And sorry, I was distracted by the dog over there rolling in something he shouldn't be rolling in. <laughs> That's Dave Monty's dog. She'll get to clean it up. <laughs> Anywho. So, um, so. <laughs> Okay. No, I think it's just, don't worry. It's not like really bad. It's just, he sees things and he likes to roll in. So anyway, um, so, so one of the things The biggest that, issue. No, was, uh, yeah. Sorry. Let me just, I remembered what I was going to say is we have an article mm-hmm. on, do you need a website? Yeah. And we'll link to that. Um, and really the answer is not any one answer. It depends on you. It depends on what your goals are. Mm-hmm. Uh, it depends on the kind of work that you're doing. So, and, but in particular, what your goals are, if you don't have a, a site yet, And we have a lot of people in our audience who don't yet have a site, a website, and they're wondering if they need it. Uh, And some who... And they might be at the stage where they know that they want to do more with their creativity and their art. They're just not sure they want to commit to the costs associated with committing to having a website, committing to everything that comes along with having a website, the content responsibility and all that. So it's still sort of like, uh, if you're on the fence of 
do I actually want to dive into this art being my full time thing that supports me? And yes. and that that can be a tricky yeah. area where there's you have a million questions and there's an article that answers every question and you still are left not sure of of where to go. Yeah. And that's been a big struggle. We've struggled with that in sort of deciding different ideas and what to go after and not go after. So yeah. we know that that's an issue as well. Yeah, and, and exactly. And many people who, who are starting with their creative endeavor becoming their livelihood or beginning to earn from it, if you're not already, um, then a lot of people are doing that as a side gig, mm -hmm. a side job. And, you know, the thing that we have definitely learned is that to have to create a website is while it can be done easily these days with all the plug and play essentially kind of wordpress sites you can do it yourself you know and you know in a day you could have your website up you could hire someone for a few hundred dollars probably to do it for you um you know we're talking about very basic websites one of the popular ones for artists and creators is wix um, uh, squarespace and squarespace yes and we don't recommend either of those just because if you want if you're serious about growing your website into more of your professional endeavor then wordpress uh, sites still get a little better traction in google search results according to the experts in the industries that we've read about um so you know so for that reason we would probably recommend a wordpress site at least until there becomes a wider array. Not only that, but there are a lot more flexibility of options, plugin options that you have access to if you're on a WordPress site than if you're on one of the newer platforms. So not to disparage those, um, you know, they're beautiful and they're fine and if that's what you want to go with fine. It's probably not going to make a huge difference. Yeah. Um, but at any rate, there are, are so many solutions. However, the biggest issue is, let's say that you get your website up, whether you do it yourself or you pay a few hundred dollars to someone to do it for you, a basic website up within a day. Then it's sort of like putting your artwork um, up in a, in a shop. It's like you can put an, a painting on the wall of a local art shop and it might hang there for months and even years without selling. Mm -hmm. And so it's kind of the same with a website. You can throw a website up, but unless you understand the nuances of beginning to create content that people are actually searching for on Google so that you can get in the flow of what's happening in the traffic on, on Google, unless you are learning how to do that as well, then people may never find you. It would and on top of that, a lot of artists get discouraged by that and the fact that it can seem like the business side of art becomes its own day job when all you wanted to do was sell your art. Yeah. And so there are like, if all you want to do is just sell your art, there are definitely artists that are successfully just using their Instagram or Facebook page and just selling a piece as they make it, posting it and just having people message them for, for all of that. And that becomes its own hustle. But if your sole goal is just selling your prints, just selling what you create, then that could be its own route as well because mm -hmm. not everybody likes the content creation process and so i think that that also becomes its own sort of barrier for some right exactly so it's a good point and so uh, if you're just starting out then having so many uh, options available to you such as the instagram and facebook etc are fantastic ways uh, to begin to not only sell your art online, but to find out what people are interested in buying. Mm -hmm. um, so let's say that you're a potter and you know you have a certain mug that you know you make, but you also make bowls and you also make candlestick holders or candle holders. Um, and then you discover that this one little thing that you happen to make that was, I don't know, like maybe a squirrel, you know, like a little a you know, a miniature, a miniature of a squirrel. Mm -hmm. Yeah, ornament or a Christmas ornament. It could, yeah, it could be something clever um, like that, like different. Actually ended up getting growing viral and becoming really popular. Um, so you wouldn't have known that if you hadn't had a chance to post on your Facebook page. And so you definitely want to continue to want to start out growing a Facebook page, mm -hmm. if nothing else. Um, and you know, then you can test the market by sharing all the things that you're making. You'll get a chance to see what people really like. And then those are the things that, for instance, if you start an Etsy store, which we will talk about in a future uh, mm -hmm. session as well, because we're going to be learning more about that ourselves. Um, then you would know what to make multiples of. 
for some, it might be handmade beads, mm -hmm. you know, and if you know that that's something that's going to sell, then you can in advance, you know, make, you know, a hundred handmade beads before you list them in your store on Etsy so that you would have enough inventory to make more before you sold out, you know, that kind of thing. So that's just an example. Um, and all these options that we're listing and talking about, uh, you might already know about a lot of them and you're thinking, okay, that's fantastic. How do I even get started with just one? Yeah. You know, I think that's a big stage that many artists come to. It's like they get the fire hose of right. options and then they're like, okay, but I want to start in the next hour. What can I do to make progress today yes. on any of this? So, if, yeah, if I were doing just one thing to make progress now and I have an hour, I would probably work on creating content for my, for my Facebook page and yeah. I didn't have a website. Would you agree? Yeah, because well, on Facebook you can create a shop. Now, an exception to that might be Instagram because for those who are building an Instagram account, you know, then yeah. there can be a lot of, you know, you can spend that same amount of time creating a lot of content and buzz on Instagram, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, or you could divide it, you know, half your, if you have an hour, divide half an hour on Facebook and half an hour on Instagram because really, if you're going to post something on Facebook anyway, you're going to have it done in five to 10 minutes. Yeah, exactly. Um, but then you might come back in a little bit later and for another five to 10 minutes on, and see yeah. what people have said, etc. cetera. Uh, so yeah, I would try a couple of different platforms depending on your craft to see what, where your audience and your prospective audience um, resonates and responds most. Well, I know a couple of people in our audience, Jennifer Riga Manuel posts on her Facebook and her Instagram, and that's her primary way of communicating and selling. And she does a fantastic job of creating a story around the pieces that she makes. She does like knitting, painting. She used to do pottery. She's done jewelry. So she's done like, she's a multi-talented creator right. and she creates great stories around what she's made and people buy it. And she also is connected with local galleries as well. But a big portion of her following is just on Facebook and Instagram alone, really. Right. And so for instance, it might be Pinterest too. Mm -hmm. So like we have a gardening website we've talked about before and we get a good bit of traffic when we post things on Pinterest. Um, same thing for a recipe site, same thing for any kind of visual site. So it really kind of depends on where you spend time and what kind of things you like as to which platform you should, should pursue first. You should start with the one you're familiar with, the place where you like to hang out, because chances are if you're hanging out there, then your audience is hanging out there as well. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's one thing. But one of the thing about one of the things about building your brand online, let's say that, unless for the sake of this podcast, mm -hmm. we're going to assume that part of why you're tuning into this and following us is because you are interested in growing your art in the world and, and hopefully into a business that will support you and or increase what you're already doing to the place where it's more lucrative than it already is. Um, and so in that case, then one of the best things it is to be in multiple places, but so, so if you have Instagram and you're on Facebook, then those two synchronize as well because Facebook owns Instagram. So if you advertise on one, then you can advertise on the other easily. Um, and you can see how your audience interacts between the two. But if you decide and you're deciding about a website or let's say you already have a website, we have an author and um, copywriter in our community, um, Mackenzie, who um, does have his own website. But what happens is if you have your own website, one of the ways to help Google find you is through backlinks. That's from other sites linking to your site because that's like social proof. Yeah. It's like somebody voting for you. So in Google's eyes, if a website is linking to your site, and especially if that website already has some traffic and credibility of its own, then Google looks at that as a social proof, as a metric of approval and a vote for your site, which means that you're going to get more traffic by virtue of what they call backlinks. It's sort of like when you go into Target and you see a specific brand of um, toy or something and because they're promoting that particular brand and it's like because you're in Target and you see that brand name of that product it's like Target has endorsed that product of worthy of being sold in Target so it's a little similar like when you see a website that links back to somebody else's site it's like that site is quote endorsing this is content that we think you should read too. Yeah, exactly. And so the reason we mentioned this is because one of the, so one of the ways to get traffic to your site is if you have a Pinterest account or an Instagram account and Facebook account, and you periodically send uh, post things that send traffic from those platforms to your website. So that's one. And another one that's even more powerful is if you create content for other websites. So let's say that you write for Huffington Post or you write for um, uh, what Entrepreneur, would be? Forbes, Inc. Yeah, well, any of those, but, but, for, but for creators as well. You know, like, so let's say that you, uh, like if you had a course on Creative Live, 
um, you know, like if you were an artist and you had skills and you wanted to teach in Creative Live or write an article for them, I don't know actually they accept just articles. I and mean, yeah. we should we should look into that. I think that. Corey Huff might for the abundant, abundant artist. artist. Yeah. I know he has a lot of guest posts from um, visual artists. Right, and we've had so. we'll link to that our podcast with him as well, and we'll link in this uh, when once we're finished with this, we'll do some more research before we publish it and link some of the places uh, where you might write. Uh, guest write as an artist. So Nicole Mackey has done some guest writing and freelancing and she's getting into a little bit more freelance writing as well. And we also have a great podcast with uh, Eric Rosenberg who got his start being a freelance writer on multiple sites, which we yeah. can link to that because sometimes if you're just a writer, yeah. freelance writing on any topic that you can research is, is helpful, right. you know, but anyway. Right. No, no, that's a great point. And I'm glad you remember the, those people to mention and we can link to their content here as well. Um, so a lot of times, like there's always this like friction uh, for anyone, um, creators, especially about the concept of doing things for free. Um, but if you consider that if you write an article for a site, think about it not as for free, but rather as an investment in your advertising and your promotion and you're building your brand. It's your brand building. When you think about like the resources on Facebook and Instagram and Pinterest and all those that we've mentioned, all of those are fantastic free resources. Mm -hmm. To put up a website and maintain it is really, really cheap compared to a storefront. And yet where you have to pay the extra is in the willingness to put forth the time and effort, sweat equity, as it were, to create content that will attract your audience as well as um, that to share it with other sites and other people so that those sites can link back to yours. Yeah. So it's like you either pay for infrastructure that's already built for you or you pay with time and you build the infrastructure. Yeah. You're <laughs> which, you know, both, right. both are great in different situations. Right. It's right. And so most of us don't have a million dollar budget, you know, to spend money on advertising to send traffic our way uh, or to do lots of Facebook ads and that sort of thing to build your page. Any of that is good to do if you can do some of it. But until then, or even after then, then really it's a multiple pronged approach uh, where it is that you're creating content for other sites so that they can link to yours. So toward that, mm -hmm. did you want to introduce? No, you do it. You've been doing the build no. up. No, okay, okay. We've been working on something really, really cool. At least we think it's cool. And we hope it's cool for you guys too. And you should say. Why? Okay. Are you sure? You go yes, ahead. go. <laughs> okay. Well, okay. Then you tell the, the reason for the name. Okay. Okay. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Do you want to? Okay. So um, we have created something called a Creators Corridor on iCreateDaily.com. And the reason for the name? So we were trying, we were coming up with all sorts of different names to call this. We were like creator profiles, artists in residency is still on the table as a sub name kind of. And we're coming just all sorts of different names. And then I was doing some Googling, um, as you do. And <laughs> well, we are also trying to have it alliterate with a C. Right. Yeah. As well. You know, we like alliteration. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so... I like start, sustain, succeed. We like the alliteration yeah. of words that go together. So creator's corridor, normally you think of a corridor as just a hallway and that's cool. A hallway of art is an awesome concept on its own, but uh, corridor also means to get from one point to the next point. And the thing with I Create Daily is we want to help artists get from point A to point B, whatever their point A is and whatever their point B is. So whether your point A is to start art and sell your first piece or sell your first book or whatever it is or generate more from what you're already doing. Um, we want to help you get from where you are to where you're going. And so the concept of the creator's corridor is really to help promote your work on a platform that we are building. And so while yes, it is under I Create Daily. It's still a space on the internet. It's an infrastructure. It's like a storefront almost mm -hmm. for you to contribute your artwork, your writing, your musings, your poetry, um, how-to tips that you have because you have knowledge and you might not be famous yet. You might not be a big influencer yet. You're building, but you have important knowledge about art and we're building a platform mm -hmm. as well. And so we can blend the expertise of your knowledge of what you've learned how to do with our expertise in the platform that we're building and continuing to build because we're going to be around for a while. Yeah. And 
this will help you not only link to your websites or social medias if you have them, but it will help you get familiar with being and publishing work in the world without all the hassle of trying to set it up and build all the infrastructure yourself. And so do you want to get into the sort of difference between if they have a website versus not have a website and what, what it's for? Yeah, sure. So if you have a, a website, like your number one priority is going to be creating content for your website. But again, like we said in the setup for this announcement, um, you, once you have your website, you need to find a way to drive traffic to it. And one way is to have traffic coming to it from other sites. Um, and so, so an example might be like, if you have a commitment to write an article per week for your site, then you might write an article per month um, or a few articles over time um, that you post and contribute to I Create Daily in your area of expertise. Um, because like Devani and I are not visual artists. Our primary creative outlet for now is content creation and writing. Um, and building and website portfolios. Building website portfolios as well as creating branded merchandise and products, which we're bringing to the market. Well, and Devani is wearing one. I create daily. So we're Whoa, working. that was a lot. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Okay. She was just showing it for those not on camera. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. So anyway, um, yeah, I forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> anyway, our area of expertise isn't like painting. Like Linda yeah. Suzanne Wright and Lynn oh, yeah. Hundley are painters, and they're great, and they do the yeah. art, and they have the styles. And, so yeah, like and, that's not what we are focused on. I mean, I enjoy dabbling in paint, but I'm no expert in it. I would not. So write it's an wonderful article. when we have um, people from our community yeah. who can write the articles as the, you know from your expertise, your area of expertise. We're crowdsourcing knowledge. Yeah. We're crowdsourcing knowledge, and we're sharing the leverage of our platform with you, um, just as you're sharing your knowledge with us, and uh, we're sharing our knowledge with you because any of the contributors to who are um, part of the creators corridor and I create daily will also get uh, regular support messages and also coaching, free coaching on how to build your brand and grow your site as well. Um, so all of that is a part of the creators corridor. It's, it's very new where we now have the platform. We now have like the, um, some of the profiles listed and we're beginning to populate some of those with content. Uh, we're still working a little bit on some of the infrastructure you know, tweaks, but basically it's there and there's an application which we will uh, link to in this podcast mm -hmm. where you can link to and apply to be included in the uh, creators corridor. Yeah. And it's, it's exciting. Yeah. We're really excited about it. Yeah. And I think the biggest help for people who don't have a website and they don't know WordPress and they don't know where to start, I think this will j really help you get comfortable with being on the internet so that when you do decide to branch out, then it's not so hard. Yeah. There's not this huge learning curve of I have to learn a new thing and do this new thing because you're already comfortable. You've already started posting and it can also take away from the discomfort of what if I post something and nobody does anything because we'll be taking your content and sharing it onto our social media and shouting you out and tagging you and stuff yes. in it as well. Yes. Anyway, yeah. you know, we're, we're trying to help soften the abrasiveness of getting yourself on the internet to yeah. help grow. Yeah, and you know, I mean, I'm glad you mentioned that because it reminds me, it's like one of the things that when we were creating products and I, and I know or when, you know, when I say when, as in past tense, it's like over the past few years of creating multiple things and books, journals, whatever, and trying to get them out into the world, you know, all of us, I think all creators can relate to the concept. It wouldn't be wonderful if someone would just take and, you know, promote my work. Right. Wouldn't, you know, if I could just keep creating and someone would- then Without come, charging an arm and a leg. Exactly. <laughs> because take, people will do it. Yeah, exactly. But they'll be like, That's all right, right. please yeah. sell me your soul yeah, and yeah. I'll help <laughs> right. you. Right. It's like, if we could just find a way you know, to get it out there so we can keep on doing what we do best and that's making more, you know, wouldn't that be great? And so that's part of what this, what drives all of this. And that, like Devani was saying, we definitely will be, you know, promoting you for you for free. Um, yeah. but, and this is like the symbiotic community concept where we basically, we're helping each other and in helping each other, you know, we're helping ourselves. And this well. is what social media and the internet was for. It was yeah. for putting your content out there and people who like it, share it. And so we like your content. We love that you guys are creators and we want to ensure that you keep creating because yeah. it's inspiring and it's awesome. Yeah. So like if you're a writer like Mackenzie, i um, sorry, what's Mackenzie Clench? Yeah. Mackenzie Clench, um, recently published his book. Um, so that would be an example. He's publishing his book. Uh, he recently Dale, yeah. published his new website and he's, okay. his he's doing a lot of things that I don't know what 
stay just there. okay so so we'll have to we'll include of course his link um here and he's on our inner quarters uh uh, sorry, our creator's quarter as well. Um, but it would be an example when his book, when, when, if your book comes out and you're one of our creators, then of course we will be featuring you on the I Create Daily um, Facebook page, as well as the Instagram account, as well as the website. Um, we'll have a section for featured contributors. Um, so, and all of that for free. Um, in exchange just for like, again, yeah. we're, we're contributing to each other's creativity and helping elevate yeah. you with our platform as, as well as you sharing some of your um, what you offer to the world to the world through other avenues uh, including your own site your own social and then the creators quarter so we would yeah. love to have you apply again the link will be in this podcast love to hear what you think about it um, and, and your ideas because it's yeah. still if you're listening to this in um, November ish area of 2018 we're still sort of incubating how it will expand we've already created the application we already have a basic idea of it and we've already implemented a lot uh, on the site for you guys and several of you have already joined and you're already you're already on board and stuff but if you have ideas of what would help you we would love to know because this is of course to help you guys yeah and speaking of helping you guys and all the stuff that we're all trying to do mm -hmm. so we this is the first coffee break we've done in quite a long time yeah so just to let you guys know in case you wonder like what our publishing schedule is basically it isn't uh, our publishing <laughs> schedule is daily <laughs> what yeah. happens yeah. is very different exactly it's that is so we've been you know running to keep up and catch up with ourselves so to speak in our plans um and so we're not yet at our level of consistency that we have set for ourselves um, with the podcast being a weekly thing yet, uh, but we're working on it and we definitely are publishing something every day, like Damani said. So either it's a podcast or an audio article, an interview, uh, coffee break, etc., cetera, um, or uh, just in our social platforms. Um, so yeah, looking forward to sharing more and getting more consistent in 2019. Yes. We also have been really busy um, working on hiring a lot of outsourcers recently. Mm -hmm. So that can be something we can do a future session yeah. on. If you guys are interested and need and help with people. that, we yeah. can talk about how we've done it. Yeah, and, and are doing it because that's probably about the past month we've been working on hiring and training new virtual assistants um, in a number of different areas from WordPress, website builders, to graphic designers, to uh, just general all around um, assistants. Yeah. So, all right. Well, yeah. well that's, that's a wrap, a wrap for, for today and we'll see you on some form of content soon. soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.